Hey everyone, so it's uh, Chris here, like always, and I am finally going to get around to doing a rebuild, in this case, of this red fatty here. And I actually purchased this one mostly because I needed it apart for something else, um, but I ended up using that on another four, because... <laughs> Anyways, uh, long story short, this has been sitting around for a long time and needs to get rebuilt. I uh, apologise if there's any audio issues. I'm wearing a thick jacket because it's cold here in the shed and it makes all sorts of lovely rustling noises. Um, in terms of what I've actually got on the desk today, I've got the original races, most of them at least. Apart from one, which was looking a bit rough, you can actually feel it. That is obviously no good. So one they replaced, but the others are all the original ones. Um, in most cases, you can flip them over if they have bearing marks on one side and use the other side. Um, they're not perfect. There's a tiny bit of some sort of mark on the top edge here, but as long as you place them in the right orientation, that part will never even make contact. Um, and then I've got the inner races, and these are the original ones. Uh, you flip them around and give them a bit of a, a clean. Don't want to go too crazy on the polish on these. Um, but I just gave them a bit of a buff and they seem to be alright. If for some reason I find that there's a lot of roughness when I put them on, I can always dig out some other ones, but I'd rather, if possible, use the original ones. Um, these ones actually have on this side written the number in which I took them off, so when I'm pulling out the outer, sorry, the, the uh, telescope, I actually write with marker on the braces so that I know which order they go in. So one of the things I need to do is just make sure I transfer that number over to the outside just so it's easier to see when I'm putting them back in, since that side is now on the inside. In terms of the bearings, um, most of these are basically restored bearing cages where I've taken the cages and I've cleaned them out and I've put either new bearings in or I've put in cleaned bearings that I've gone over one by one to make sure they don't have any corrosion. Um, so I've left some here so that I can do them on camera so to speak. But yes, these three I've already done, and then basically these are some of the bearings that came out of a broken cage, and you can just fit them back in. Now, with every single one of these, I've given them a visual inspection, and when I put them in, I also feel them. So if you can feel any sort of roughness, um, sometimes you can't see it, but you can feel it. That is going to be an indication you're going to have an issue with that. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of paying attention. Um, I do also have a jar full of oil with a load of these needles whenever I can find them that are in good condition. Um, and I've also been able to purchase um, new needles that are very, very similar sized from Improved Part. And um, I've already been using them in one of the lefties. They seem to be fine. Um, 
I'm going to be doing a rebuild of a lefty soon with all new cages I believe I think that I'm getting sent to me so there is options for new needles if you need them which is good because it's harder and harder to find the original ones they are still in stock some places but uh, can often be a bit expensive so that's the last bearing in place Okay, so those are the bits that are going inside the telescope, and then the other parts that we'll need is the bottom sort of bumper o-ring. It's not a o-ring precisely, it's not a seal, it's just a bumper, so you can kind of get away with a different, slightly different sized one. Then we have the boot, and this one's actually an original one that is intact. I've checked it out and gone through, looked for any cracks or anything, and it's fine. I can't remember if I bought this one new or not, it was in the box with these things. Um, so I might have pulled it out of a new package, can't remember now, because this has been sitting around for too long. Here's the bottom threaded cap and I have some grease today I'm going to use shrimp butter probably or slick honey either one um, maybe I'll use slick honey actually So there's other parts to do this which is for the damper, I'm going to leave those for now. So I'm just going to deal with the actual telescope first. You can do this with some chopped top um, inner tube and some tied up inner tube that you can inflate and some electrical tape and stuff. But I was getting a bit tired of that approach um, and so I ended up buying this kit from Improved Part which does make it a lot easier um, so yeah let's start off with with this process and uh, see how it goes so firstly I'm sorry if the lighting is a bit low it's pretty gloomy outside and my overhead lights not that bright um, firstly you just want to a little bit of grease on this just to so it's not totally dry I'm going to grease it up afterwards I just want to make sure when I put the o-ring on it's not just all friction so the ring going on there and we've got the boot and I'm tempted to fit this around here right right now because it's a bit tight um, I sometimes leave it till afterwards but maybe I'll do it now while it's accessible A bit, of a, a bit of a hassle to get these tighter boots on. Some of them were a bit easier. Okay, that was a right hassle. But there we go. So, got that on. Then this goes on. Actually, I just want to make sure. It's threading nicely into here. Make sure there isn't any issues there. 
that's all fine. So that goes on there. And then um, we've got this lower collar. Just gonna slightly tighten it up. And this is a five mil. So I'm going to put I'm going to put a decent amount on just to coat the back side of the surfaces. And then we're going to take the the races and put them on and I've got this order one, two, three, four. So this is the front of the the um, fork and I put them on in that order. Okay. start to tighten it up and then I'll position the races where they need to be. Okay. So you want each of the races, the bottom of the hole, if it has a hole for the retainer, to be just clearing the top of the inner shaft. If there is no retainer, then it just goes directly in line. But if there is, then they just need to clear that precisely. So I just look at every single hole, make sure that they're all bang on with the bottom edge, with top edge, sorry. And then get a bit tightened down and I think I actually loosened off one of the uh, these grub screws, so I just need to tighten up the grub screws. The grub screws are what actually press against the bearings. I mean, against the races, sorry. I usually don't type, uh, loosen those, but uh, I did for something else, and it's just a bit loose. There we go. Okay, so now, once everything is tight, you can go through and uh, check them all again. It's looking good. So at that point in time, we can put the top um, tool on. And this one is basically going to, it's also clamped down against the bearing races, but it um, holds the needle bearings in place. So again I'm going to just situate it, start to get it tightened down and then I'm going to measure the distance from the top. If you were doing this with 
electrical tape and rubber bands and things. You would be doing something very similar. You would have used electrical tape and in the tube or whatever to clamp down this stuff. And then you would be basically holding the the bearings in place at the right position and taping those down. Um, this here is basically half a cage, 11 holes, and so um, you just want to have it effectively like halfway. Um, so it should just be sitting like that, so there's the eleventh bearing is there and then the twelfth is there. So now we have the halfway mark of the bearing cage um, meeting the top of the shaft. So now I'm just going to get a decent amount of grease onto the bearings. Just want to rub it through them. And I can put them into here. I would normally do this on a um, clamped onto my work stand, but it's going to be hard to film, so I'm going to do it right here. So I'm just, I'll show this in a second, I'm just putting the grease on all the cage, on all of the linear bearings needle bearings and placing them in the tool. Again, one of the tricky things with using rubber bands and tape for this is you have to sort of avoid the, the grease to some extent because otherwise it's very hard for it to stay stuck. So it's a bit easier. So this is what it looks like now. Um, so these are ready for the top half to be inserted. So I'm going to prepare the top half and then we're going to do the insertion. Okay, so we've got the top outer part of the telescope here. And it races. So we want to just Get a bit of grease onto each one on the back. Give it, I'll give them a rub in a sec. These ones are all um, the same thickness and they generally are. I've never run across a set where there's one that's different. At least not from factory, and uh, believe that's standard. If somebody knows any different, let me know. But yeah, as far as I know, they're always the same. So that's the back side of those done up. Now, this is basically a bit like um, like one of those. Um, clamps for um, the ends of handlebars and some other things. Um, as you tighten it up, it squeezes it out and that grabs the erasers internally. So you could use like an inflatable system like using a inner tube tied on one end and then you pump it up when, you're, when it's in there. But it, I found it's tricky for them not to start leaking and then dropping your braces. Um, I found this works a lot better for me. Uh, you don't have to use it, of course, but for me it works a lot better. So, 
making sure it's nice and loose. Just getting the, the bearings in there. So you have to kind of slide them along the bearing track and then they should fit underneath the, the lips of the tool. But you need to make sure they are actually aligned in the bearing track. So I'll tighten this up and I'll show you. So if you push the Generally, if you push the tool all the way through, the bearings are going to stick out. I'm just going to give it a little bit of tension. So, tightened it down a bit, now tightening it down all the way. And so you should be able to see this one here, for example, it's a bit springy and this can happen because they were in the other way around and just with age and things like that, they, they can end up a bit slightly warped um, and that's fine after it's all put together, but you just have to bear in mind that it might catch on the bearings when you're trying to put them in. But as long as it's sitting squarely in the bearing track, and and it's not off to one side that is that's what's important so this is now ready and now so these bearings are halfway out and what's going to happen is this is going to slide on with these bearings making contact against the races. Um, I think I need more light in here. Hang on a sec. That's pretty better. I forgot I had that light there. Um, so, with these races making contact with the bearings, it's going to get down to about here, down to where this sh inner shaft meets and at that point it can't continue anymore because it can't just slide over the bearings without the bearings rolling and these roll will want to roll down so at that point this will come off and the whole thing will start to telescope inwards so bearing in mind that um, these are sticking out a little bit I just need to make sure that it's not catching and normally I would do this on the, the work stand but doing it here so it's a bit slightly easier to film um, sometimes you need to give them a little bit of a just a little bit of a jiggle just kind of helps it get over the bearings okay so now we're at the point where the inner shaft has met the outer shaft and at that point you can't really pull it down without forcing it so at this point we undo this tool so this tool will start to come down and then this will now roll over the bearings. So I'm gonna undo this completely and take this part off. Sorry if the lighting is a bit harsh, but it's with a lot of black, it's hard to light it well without some overexposure. 
I'm also using a different camera than I used to. So should see how that comes out. So now these are working their way down. At this point, I can remove this one. One of the other things I found when I was using the inner tube system is because it slowly did leak out on me at least, um, I always felt like I was in a bit of a rush. But with this, uh, I can just leave it sitting around for a long time and not worry about it. So after I undo this top part, let's give it a little tap that releases the spring. That comes out. Now, Do up. I'll tighten this up in a second, but I'm just tightening it up so that this whole thing can't go flying out while I'm checking it. And there we go. It's nice and smooth. Now the last thing I need to do is to install the retainer clip which I forgot to mention and it is around here somewhere here we go so this retainer clip goes in here um, let me see how I can light this up where the bearing um, inner bearings are and there's the, the holes at the top the clip needs to fit into those holes Generally what I will do is I will use a pick and I am not sure how I can show this very easily on camera. I'm going to try. Let me see if I can move this around a bit. So I'll place this in here and use the pick to line up the tabs on my finger and then you can just pull the Races, the races sort of spring away to get the tabs for the retainer clip in place. And again, it's a bit easier to do this without trying to get it on camera, but there we go. So now you can see that clip is in there and it's holding the four bearings in position. So now the bearings can't shift. Now the last thing to do is to um, put this over this cap. But firstly I want to get the other stuff done before I do that. So I'm probably going to finish this video here so it's nice and easy and there's not one big massive long video um, but that is putting together the bearing races for a headshock and they're pretty much all the same apart from the early generation which have adjustment um, grub screws like one I'll show you in a second so this is a very early generation this is a delta fork and it has these grub screws which you use to adjust the races now, every, all the other ones follow the same procedure that I just did on that. And these tools that I used, um, these ones I get from Improved Part, 
That's um, I can't remember how much they are. They're pretty reasonable. Um, I used some dental picks, which I just get from Amazon or whatever. Um, I used slick honey grease, which let me just turn this light up. It's a bit too bright now. I use this slick honey grease. I also use SRAM butter, but I prefer the slick honey stuff. It's from Buzzies. And um, yeah, that's everything for the outer. And on the next video, which I will film pretty shortly, I'll be rebuilding this inner, sorry, this um, um, cartridge and putting together a new air cylinder and placing all of that inside the fork. So uh, thanks for watching and um, yeah, any questions, give me a shout. Chris in the future here. Uh, for some reason, I ran out of space on my camera, so I didn't manage to film the end of that. Uh, thanks for watching and I will try to get the other video out soon. I know it's been a long time, uh, just things get in the way. But uh, again, thanks for watching and any questions, just give me a shout.